Okay guys, today we are going over the best Paladin gear in Baldur's Gate 3. This gear is based around my Vengeance Paladin build, which I will link in the description. And with that being said, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to Purge Evil. So right off the bat, with the Paladin, we start with a Warhammer. And what some people might not realize with the Warhammer is that it's actually versatile, which means as soon as you start the game, you should unequip your shield. So now your Warhammer is a two-hander. And boom, you're already doing that much more damage. We also have these Javelins, right? There's no picture here, but the Javelins are actually pretty decent for the Paladin. And I'm gonna recommend using Javelins or thrown spears like this rather than using bows. But there is gonna be one bow that I recommend. And we're gonna go over that real quick before we move on. And it's gonna be called the Spell Thief. This is the only bow in the entire game that I'm gonna recommend for the Paladin specifically because the Paladin is notoriously spell starved and when you land a critical hit with this bow you regain a level one spell slot once per short rest so this is actually really really good for a Paladin basically you would use this bow get the level one spell slot from it and then you would go back to throwing your javelins and stuff like that you know what I mean now moving on before you even leave the uh nautiloid you're gonna get the everburn blade now this is a great sword which is a two-hander and it does an extra 1d4 of fire damage with every hit now the only way you can get this you only get one chance to get this as well one chance in the entire game and it's from commander zalk on the nautiloid during the prologue Commander Zalk is the guy that's fighting the Mind Flayer. And I didn't actually know this was on the wiki, but I've been doing this. The easiest way to get his weapon instead of trying to kill him because he has so much health, the easiest way is to grab Shadow Heart out of the pod, go into her spells, and prepare command. And then when you get to the helm, you're going to have her use command to force Commander Zalk to drop the Everburn Blade. And then you can just pick it up, throw it in your inventory, and immediately immediately get off the nautiloid i will recommend killing all the little mobs on the nautiloid for the experience points of course right now moving on your first piece of armor is actually going to be this basic chainmail the first place that you're going to get this armor it's going to be with one of with this guy I know you guys know who this is with this guy and his two disciples his two pupils one of them has this armor on them so you'll get this very very shortly when you start the game and next up we of course have the chainmail plus one now this is just a little bit of an upgrade from the regular chainmail but it's definitely worth it once you get to level four you can buy this from Damon, or you can buy it from the underdark now our first real armor of the game is going to come at the end of the underdark when you get to the grim forge and you're actually going to make this adamantine splint armor now you can actually make two of these because there's two mithril ores down there and the splint molds don't break or anything so you could actually make two sets of this armor but i really recommend making a set of this heavy armor and making a set of the medium armor but anyways this armor is actually 18 ac as opposed to the 17 chainmail plus one or just the 16 chainmail but we get 18 ac all incoming damage is reduced by two when a melee attack hits you the attacker is sent reeling now this is an interesting condition because whenever this condition is applied that target has a minus one penalty to attack rolls for every turn of the reeling condition that is left so let's say you have two turns of reeling right that creature is going to have a minus two penalty to attack rolls if i'm wrong about this someone correct me down in the comments but i do believe that is how this works and we also get immunity to critical hits which is just absolutely busted now moving on to the mountain pass with the githyanki crash right you get the strange conduit ring 
sorry if I sound a bit nasally. But anyways, when you are concentrating on a spell, so i.e. Hunter's Mark, you know, protection from evil and good, anything, if you're, if you're concentrating on anything, your attacks deal an additional 1d4 psychic damage. I forgot the boots of speed are also in the underdark the boots of speed and i really really like these for the paladin or really for anybody because they give you a bonus action dash so you don't need to be a thief or be a uh, rogue which essentially doubles your movement speed right so you get these from the i believe she's a gnome in the myconid colony and there's a couple different ways you can go about that so i will leave that up to you now moving on we have the the gloves of heroism whenever you use a channel oath spell you gain heroism which heroism if you don't know you receive five temporary hit points every turn and you cannot be frightened very good paladin spell and you'll get these uh where the fake paladins are in the risen road by carlac now moving on to yet another paladin specific piece of armor we have the helmet of smiting now when you apply a condition with one of your smite spells you gain temporary hit points equal to your charisma modifier which is pretty nice to have and you also get a plus one bonus to constitution saving throws making concentration easier to maintain now this chest is simply found as soon as you enter the underdark at the salunite outpost from under the goblin camp next up Next up, we have the Holy Lance Helm. I think this is probably better for a light domain cleric, but if you don't have that in your party, this is a great alternative because creatures who miss their attacks on the Paladin, which is gonna be often because he has such high AC, right? They have to make a dexterity saving throw or else they take 1d4 radiant damage. You also, just like the last helmet, you get a plus one bonus to constitution saving throws. You'll get this one from the Rosemorn Monastery, near the eagles now this one you'll probably run into before you get to the mountain pass if you're like me and do the underdark first you'll get this one from grimforge as well actually you'll get this from the boss in grimforge right and this one gives you a free hunter's mark so you don't need to use a spell slot for it you get resistance to fire damage which is half fire damage and this one also makes you immune to criticals be aware of what pieces of armor give you critical hit immunity because you don't want to have multiple pieces of armor on the same character that give him immunity to critical hits when one of those pieces of armor could be put on another party member and making them immune to critical hits as well you know what i mean so with that being said we will move on yet another other gift yankee piece of armor we're actually going to recommend this for the paladin because it grants us more temporary hit points when we're concentrating definitely very useful for the paladin because it might not seem like it but we will be concentrating on spells a lot of the time right and you also get a nice plus one to athletics and you get these from the crash as well or you get these from the trader at the gift yankee crash moving on to my last recommendation of act one is going to obviously be the Soulbreaker Greatsword, which has a plus one enchantment and it gives you a plus two bonus to initiative rolls. Now, if you are a Gith Yankee or you transform yourself into a Gith Yankee, you'll deal an additional 1d4 psychic damage, which stacks with everything else we've had so far. But even if you don't become a Gith Yankee to get that little buff, this sword is still worth using because it does good damage and that plus two bonus to initiative rolls is something that you really just can't pass up a nice ability you get with this is called soul breaker has a chance to stun the enemy it does a little bit of psychic damage of course but the main use of it is to stun an enemy now you'll get this one from the gith yankee crush of course now act two is going to be very short there's not much armor to get for a paladin in act two or at least i'm not going to recommend it much this is 18 ac armor by the way we get the eternal devotion ability which recharges on long rest it is essentially just an action that allows you to recite your oath to regain a channel oath charge which is just great you know and you could have this in your inventory equip it get your channel oath charge and then equip better armor a lot of armor in the game or, or a lot of gear in the game in general is like a one use type deal before you need to long rest so a really good thing to do is use whatever that piece of gear 
tier is and then it, switch it for something that you would get more out of rather than just one use if that makes sense the only other piece of gear that i'm gonna recommend in act two is gonna be the eversight ring of course which you will get from a chest in the house of healing morgue in act two and it simply makes you immune to blinded okay guys now moving on to act three we have the legacy of the master's gloves which are very rare and these are beautiful because you get a plus two bonus to your attack and your damage rolls with weapons and they also give you a plus one to strength saving throws you'll need to save the tieflings and do the whole nine to be able to buy these from Damon at Baldur's Gate next up we have a little nice amulet which is another one of those where you could swap it out after you use it this one simply gives you an additional level two spell slot this item can be abused by repeatedly equipping and unequipping it to cast an infinite number of level two spells spells so if you're like me and don't like to use exploits just don't unequip this and keep equipping it but let it be known that you can abuse this and you'll get this from the bank next up we finally have my third recommendation for a weapon for the paladin and it's of course going to be corpse grinder i actually in my first playthrough i used this until the absolute end of the game this is a plus two enchantment weapon it does bludgeoning damage which we all love bludgeoning damage you also get extra damage of 1d4 thunder and you also get grand slam so like soul breaker we get a special attack which is somewhat of an aoe and it slams the corpse grinder down into the ground dealing an additional four thunder damage and and pushing everyone away from you so just a neat little ability and you will get this one from the beach where the boat is that came from uh, the shadow curse lands you'll get this from killing this dude Kairos down there now last but not least we have Balderon's giant slayer this is a plus three enchantment legendary weapon on hit you can double the damage from your strength modifier which is absolutely crazy right and then it also grants you advantage on attack rolls against large, huge, or gargantuan creatures, which is, it's great, you know? This is basically gut sword. You can also get giant form. Obviously increases your size. You deal an additional 1d6 of damage. You also gain 27 temporary hit points, and you have advantage on strength ability checks and saving throws. This will recharge on short rest, which is pretty busted, because I feel like this should be something that should recharge on a long rest but anyways you get your standard proficiency attacks and you also get topple the big folk which deals an additional damage equal to your proficiency bonus and on a hit large huge or gargantuan creatures take an additional 2d6 slashing damage and must succeed a strength saving throw or they will fall prone and all of this makes this the best two-handed weapon in the game hands down with the most damage dealt i don't want to drop any spoilers right but you'll get this from defeating this guy at this place if you found this video helpful please subscribe and let me know what you want to see next in the comments thank you for stopping by and until next time purge evil yeah ground in my palm but i ain't put it on yeah ground in my palm but i ain't put it on yeah ground in my palm but i ain't put it on yeah ground in my palm but i ain't put it on yeah